Okay, so let's talk about loops, okay? Mental loops, time loops, versus cycles, okay? Now, part of the reason why a lot of humans, when they think about our realm, our planetary existence circling around the sun, part of the reason why we've all, we've so often had it depicted to us as the sun is stationary and we're going around it, that is reflecting a limitation on a subconscious level of who and how, who we are, you know, in the kind of truth about our reality, okay? Now, when people see the sun, when they see an image of the sun traveling through the cosmos with the earth spiraling around it and all the other planets spiraling around it, then that, that like activates something inside of our psyche, inside of our being. It like opens us up to a whole nother level of, of our existence on a dimensional, multidimensional level. Now, you may not have a tangible awareness of this at first, but it, it comes out over time usually through dream time. And, and some of the ways that it liberates our awareness is that it's pulling us out of the linear plane. It's actually pulling us out of linear, the trappings of linear time, okay? Linear time is the past is the past, the future is the future, and right here is the now. It's like time flies like an arrow through time and space. How we keep time on this planet is completely artificial. It's in our mind. It's a mental field construct that we build clocks to, we build clocks to remind us of this construct. And then we engineer our whole lives to organize around this construct. You see what I mean? And this keeps our thinking and our creativity limited when we do things like this when we think like this. So when you actually see that sun traveling through the Milky Way galaxy at hundreds of thousands of kilometers a second and the earth going around it, that, that is challenging that, that limited construct of linear time that's in our subconscious that tells us, you know, time is, rules everything. You have everything but time, right? This is a really important thing for us to to feel into for ourselves because creativity is harnessed by that our creativity is held captive held is limited by this and this is why working in the akasha is really liberating for so many humans because once we start going into the akashic levels we get introduced to circular time and we get introduced to larger cycles of the unfoldment of nature, okay? Now, a sundial is much different than an atomic clock. A sundial is much different than the clock on your wall or the clock on your phone because it's, it's still on natural time. The sun is creating the time reflection in the sundial, okay? Remember that, that's an important facet here because that's natural time. That is cycles. Cycles are not just circles that go round and round. Cycles move through ages, move through seasons, you see. Cycles move through day in and day out, but they, it's a cycle that's held by the sun and the earth. It's a cycle held by the solstices, the processions of the equinoxes. You see, these are natural cosmic cycles. And when we tune, harmonize our, harmonize our life to these natural cycles, there's a freedom that happens inside of ourselves, okay? We are no longer in the frequency of these hijacking constructs that are in our collective grids right now, okay? So time loops trap us. Mental loops trap us. Mind loops trap us. What does a mind loop look like? Mind loops happen to most humans, especially if you can track energy, right? And that's only because there's a point in time where the, the strength of your mental loop, your ment unaddressed mental emotional stuff is stronger than the subtlety of the cycle, okay? It's us holding on to, it's us 
the, the, our thoughts and feelings about holding on to something lock us in the loop versus us being laid back and relaxed inside of ourselves, seeing and then allowing the loop to show us a cycle, right? A cycle does this. You're always progressing. Even if you're revisiting seasons, a loop is like this. It doesn't go anywhere, doesn't go anywhere, doesn't go anywhere. And then our own feelings and conclusions start contributing into the cycle. Oh, it's always the same. It always happens to me. Oh, woe is me. Blah, 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 right? Let's keep this in mind. This is the secret out of the loop. This is the secret out of the loop is recognizing these things as cycles. These are cycles. The earth is going through a major cycle. We are going through major cycles. That's why some of this stuff feels so familiar. It's because we have been going, for many of us, we just busted out of loops that have held us in place for eons of time. That's held our soul's journey in a particular loop for eons of time. Those loops are now opening and now we can relate it to as a cycle. And it no longer has this endless feeling anymore. Now the infinite can come in. And I have a very tangible way to describe how it feels when the infinite comes in. And I'm going to share it with you guys. Have you guys ever been in a dep deprivation tank, a sensory deprivation tank? These are tanks full of Epsom salts and you go naked and it's totally dark and totally silent. You go naked and float on this, on, in this water, in this salt water, and, there, and you go into a deep altered state because there's no distraction whatsoever. No distraction whatsoever. There's no sound. There's no light. It's complete darkness. Well, all right. They, so some, some deprivation take, tank places like will allow a light because some people don't like the darkness. I like it when it's pitch black, when it's completely dark. And when you're in that space, you can tell the difference when you're in the mind versus when you're in your infinite nature. Okay. And this is, this is the whole secret about stepping out of time. The whole secret about stepping out of time and, and living your life outside of time. It's amazing. I got here. I'm able to drop this truth bomb on you guys. I love it. So when you are within those human constructs of limited thought, of limited idea of who you think you are, when you're deeply entrenched in the mental field, and you're in a deprivation tank situation, it'll be like time stands still. That hour or 90 minutes in that hyperbaric, or not I'm hyperbaric, um, in that deprivation chamber will feel like five hours, three hours. It'll be excruciating. But when you are in that hyperbaric, uh, I keep saying hyperbaric for some reason. When you're in that um, deprivation tank and it feels like five minutes, that's because you dialed out of the mental field and went into your spirit, into your infinite nature. And it was like, and not only that, your body got a complete relaxation and reset. Your emotional field got reset. Your mental field got reset. Your spiritual fields got reset. And when you step out, you feel completely calm and in harmony with the natural rhythms between earth and sky. Yeah, that's what it feels like. And we have we have abilities to visit this experience in this realm. I feel like that's a miracle. That's amazing. So now the trick is, how do you let go of that mental field enough <laughs> so you can get into your infinite nature in those situations? And of course, it's knowing how to hack your physical body, hack your nervous system. You put yourself into a parasympathetic nervous response. You do a breathing exercise. You do a meditation. You smile into your rhythms. Get yourself out of the fight or flight into the rest and digest and into that deprivation tank experience, then you can have a tangible experience to reflect on the difference between a loop and a cycle. That's how you can melt, your, melt those loops completely. But it takes a lot of courage to let go of all that you think is real 
It's all, you know, all the reasons why you think you're this or all the reasons why you think you're that, you know, it takes a lot of courage to let that go. But if you can, believe me, it's completely worth it. It's completely, completely worth it.